Previously, we learned that for a continuous probability distribution, such as the normal distribution, the probability of getting any single exact value is zero. So we had been talking about the distribution of adult male heights, and we had our normal curve, and recall that the mean, whoops, a little crooked there, but we get the idea, um, was 69 inches. So our x was 69, and on the z scale, of course, the mean is 0. So here's our mean on the standard normal distribution, and then the mean for our values of x. So what we're saying is, if we had a value here, say, 64 inches. What we mentioned before was the probability of getting exactly 64 inches, randomly selecting an adult male and finding that his height is exactly 64.0 inches. The probability of that, that x is equal to 64, was 0. Recall that probability is area, and when you have a single exact value, you do not have area, you have a line. A line is one-dimensional, it has no area, okay? So let me kind of say that here. So probability is equal to area, and a single exact lost my L there, value is represented by a line which has no area because it's a one-dimensional um, drawing there, okay? One-dimensional figure, a line. Okay, so therefore we're going to be interested in computing cumulative probabilities. such as the probability that x is less than some value a, the probability that x is greater than some value a, or the probability that maybe x is less than b but greater than a. So these are cumulative probabilities and therefore they'll be represented by area. Okay, so let's look at an example. The Precision Scientific Instrument Company manufactures thermometers that are supposed to give readings of zero degrees Celsius at the freezing point of water. Tests on a large sample of the thermometers show that some give readings below zero degrees for the freezing point of water and some give readings above zero degrees for the freezing point of water. Assume that the readings are normally distributed, the mean is zero degrees Celsius and the standard deviation is one degree Celsius. Okay. So that's the situation, so let's make a note here. The mean, our mean is zero, and our standard deviation is one. Now, recall this is a real world situation, but it fits our standard normal distribution. So this is like the standard normal. And there's a reason for that. We want to explore this before we get into other data sets that don't have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So given this information, we might be asked a question such as, if one thermometer is randomly selected, find the probability that at the freezing point of water, the reading is less than 1.18 degrees Celsius. So we'll start with a normal curve. I just can't get that straight line. <laughs> okay, and we said that our mean is zero, and we're interested in 
a reading less than 1.18. Well, where would that be? It would be to the right of zero somewhere. So I'm just going to pick a point right here, 1.18. Now, this is not only our um, Z uh, scale, but also X because they share the same mean and the same standard deviation. So I'll just label this as Z, but it's also the same thing as our X because we're talking about um, thermometer readings that have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Okay, less than. So let's mark what's less than here. It's this area. The probability that a randomly selected thermometer has a reading less than 1.18 is this area. Remember, that's what we're looking for. That's the area is equal to the probability. Okay, so the way we would write this using our notation, we would say the probability that x is less than 1.18. Well, that's the same thing because of the way our um, scale works here with our x and our z being the same. That's the same thing as saying the probability that z is less than 1.18. Okay, well, we can get these probabilities for z-scores using technology, using our TI-84 technology. And so let's see where we would find that. Okay, you have a second key. We want distributions. We're talking about distributions, D-I-S-T-R. So we'll use our, we'll turn it on <laughs> and use our second key and go to the distributions. Okay. And now we want the cumulative density function for normal, the normal curve. So that's our second one here in the distribution list. So we'll tab down to the cumulative. We're looking for cumulative probabilities. Okay, and now we enter the lowest value. Okay, well looking at our diagram here, the lowest value, if you see envision this, it goes all the way out to negative infinity, right? Recall that we said that once you get really beyond three standard deviations, um, there's really not much area there. So we need to, we can't enter negative infinity into the calculator. So we have to have some representative value that's going to be our negative infinity. And since we know that at three and at four, we're essentially down to almost no area, we'll just use five. So for negative infinity, whoops, let me just write this and we'll go back to that. For negative infinity, we'll use negative 5, and for positive infinity, we'll use positive 5 when we use this function. Okay, so this is where I'm going. My lowest value for my area here would go to negative infinity, and I said I'm going to use negative 5. Okay, enter. Now my highest value, well I come all the way up the scale to the highest value, 1.18. My mean is zero, my standard deviation is one. Enter. Okay, so now it's put in the data that I need, and the result I get is, whoops, it was 0 0.88, 0.880999. and then on five and more. But we want to round to four decimal places, so that's enough for me to get to a nice rounding of 0 0.8810. So what I used um, was my, on my um, normal cumulative density function. If your display is not quite the same as mine, here's what you would put in. Your lowest value to your highest value. And we get this result. So what have we found? We need to be able to write an interpretation here. Okay, the probability of randomly selecting a thermometer
with a reading less than 1.8 degrees Celsius. at the freezing point of water. is 0 0.8810 or you know just a teeny bit over 88 percent there's a little bit over 88 percent chance that if we randomly select one of the thermometers and test it it will have a reading at the freezing point of water of 1.18 or lower okay let's look at another type of question we might get if one thermometer is randomly selected. Find the probability that at the freezing point of water the reading is greater than negative 1.14 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's draw a normal curve. Right in the middle, I just can't keep it steady. That's difficult. <laughs> Okay, negative 1.14, that means it's to the left. And again, these are my z values, but they're also my x values because the mean and standard deviation are the same. Okay, now we want greater than 1.14. So we want this area out here. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. This area will give me the probability. So this time I want the probability that x is greater than negative 1.14, but that's the same thing as saying the probability that z is greater than negative 1.14 and that information is available using my TI-84 technology. Okay, this time before I even pull it up, let's think about um, how, the, uh, how we'll enter this. So we're going to use the normal cumulative density function. I'm going to put in my lowest value and then comma my highest value okay so what will those be well the lowest value is negative 1.14 comma and then I want to go all the way to positive infinity but recall we said we were going to use the the z-score of 5 really high z-score there to represent infinity so this is what we need to enter. Okay, so we go to our distributions. I want the cumulative density function. I'm going from my low value of negative 1.14 to my upper value of 5, mean standard deviation, enter. Okay, 0 0.880, oh no, I'm sorry, that was the last result, here we, here we go, 0 0.872856, okay, 0 0.872856, and we'll round probabilities to four decimal places unless otherwise instructed, 0.8729. So now our interpretation would be that the probability of randomly selecting a thermometer
<clears throat> with a reading less than negative, uh, greater than, sorry, negative 1.14. is 0.8729. Or in other words, there's approximately an 87% chance that we would randomly select a thermometer and test it and it would indicate the, the um, temperature at the freezing point of water to be somewhere between negative 1.14 and higher. Okay, these interpretations are just a nice sentence that kind of explains what you just did and it shows that you do understand what you're doing. Okay, a third type of problem. If one thermometer is randomly selected, find the probability that at the freezing point of water it is between negative 1.15 and 0.75. Okay, so here's zero. Here's, let's see, negative 1.15, and somewhere over here would be 0.75. These are my z scores, but they're also my x values. Okay, this time we want this, whoops, we want this area, get the right color here, uh, between. Okay, so again we'll use the normal cumulative density function. Put in our lowest value, negative 1.15, our highest value, 0.75. You have to have these in order. Okay, and this is going to give us the probability that our z, or sorry, let's start with x. The probability, let me get that correct. Okay, the probability that x lies between 0.75 and negative 1.15. Well, that's the same thing as saying the probability that, oops, 1.15, that z is in that range. And this is how we find it with our low to our high. Okay, so let's pull that up. We'll go to our distribution list, choose the normal cumulative density function. Our low value now is negative 1.15. Upper value is 0.75. Okay, and we get 0.6483007. Point six four eight three zero zero seven, which is approximately equal to point six four eight three. And in our interpretation, the probability of randomly selecting a thermometer. with a reading between negative 1.15, that's a 1 degrees Celsius, and 0.75 degrees Celsius at the freezing point of water. is 0.6483 or just under 65% chance that this will occur. Now, because we're using technology, uh, it's important to be able to diagram what you're doing and explain in a sentence 
what you're doing. Otherwise, you know, the technology is doing all the hard work here for you. This is where you actually demonstrate your understanding of the probability you're trying to find and what you actually did.